Section 1.6, an overview of compilation. In a typical compiler, compilation proceeds through a series of well-defined phases. Each phase discovers information for use in later phases, or transforms the program into a form that is more useful to the subsequent phase. The first few phases figure out the meaning of the source program. They are sometimes called the front end of the compiler. The last few phases serve to construct an equivalent target program. They are sometimes called the back end of the compiler. One will sometimes hear compilation described as a series of passes. A pass is a phase or set of phases that is serialized with respect to the rest of compilation. It does not start until previous phases have completed, and it finishes before any subsequent phases start. Compilers are commonly divided into passes so that the front end may be shared by compilers for more than one operating system, and so that the back end may be shared by compilers for more than one source language. In some implementations, the front end and the back end may be separated by middle end that is responsible for language and machine-independent code improvement. Prior to the dramatic increases in memory sizes in the mid to late 1980s, compilers were also sometimes divided into passes to minimize memory usage. As each pass completed, the next could reuse its code space. Let's start by looking at scanning. Scanning and parsing serve to recognize the structure of the program without regard to its meaning. The scanner reads characters and groups them into tokens, which are the smallest meaningful units of the program. For example, given a simple program like this, the scanner would receive the individual characters and group the characters into tokens. Scanning is also known as lexical analysis. The principal purpose of the scanner is to simplify the task of the parser by reducing the size of the input and by removing extraneous characters like whitespace and comments. The scanner makes it easier to generate good diagnostics in later phases by tagging tokens with lines and column numbers. The token stream generated by the scanner is used as input for the parser. Parsing organizes tokens generated by the scanner into a parse tree that represents higher level constructs, statements, expressions, subroutines, and so on, in terms of their parts. In this example, the parser is organizing the expression slope times x plus intercept, which consists of the tokens slope the multiplication symbol x, the addition symbol, and intercept into a corresponding parse tree. Each token from the scanner is a leaf in the parse tree. Taken as a whole, the tree shows how the tokens fit together to make a valid program. But where do all these nodes in the middle come from? Parsing relies on a set of potentially recursive rules known as context-free grammar. For example, these are the rules used to convert slope times x plus intercept into a parse tree. As you can see here, an expression can be defined recursively as two sub-expressions joined by an operation, which is exactly what happens here and here. A context-free grammar is said to define the syntax of the language, so parsing is known as syntax analysis. We will come back to context-free grammars and parsing later in the class. All you need to know now is that a parser matches context-free grammar rules to sequences of tokens. If the parser matches one or more tokens to something that can be broken down further with another grammar rule, the parser adds an interior node to the tree and starts matching on the new rule. If the parser matches a token to something that can't be broken down further, it adds the token to the tree as a leaf. If the parser gets to the end and has extra tokens left over, it knows something is wrong. The, compi the compiler uses the scanning and parsing phases to check your program for errors. The scanner catches errors within an individual token. Any malformed token should cause the scanner to produce an error message. For example, a variable name with invalid characters would be caught by the scanner. The parser catches errors in how tokens are combined. Any sy syntactically invalid token sequence should lead to an error message from the parser. For example, a mathematical expression that's missing an operator would be caught by the parser. <laughs> 